decisive vote of the 36th state against prohibition is happy news for the grain raisers of the United States and for many others throughout the land. Well, the campaign to uh, prohibit the sale of alcohol goes, was a very long campaign across the 19th century. One of the big disputes about what it was has to do with whether this was a religious push or something else. And I tend to think of it that one, ethnicity was very important, but also uh, people who consider themselves progressive reformers who wanted to improve society. They tended to think of alcohol consumption as something that the Catholics and other unreliable populations were involved in, and that by banning the use of alcohol, they would clean up America. There's no question that the consumption of alcohol declined with uh, prohibition. But alcohol also became much more attractive. I mean, it was became sexier. However, everyone's not waiting until December 15th. The lid is off in many places, with the downfall of prohibition being celebrated in real old-time hilarity. Um, it had a great deal of appeal. And, um, uh, you know, so the birth of the speakeasy, to take your date out, or to go out on a night in the town in the illegal drinking establishments was a very exciting thing. And to fund this, gangsters uh, provided, the, provided the illegal spirits, the illegal uh, alcohol, and became very wealthy and very involved in city politics and involved in urban institutions. Mr. Copeland asked me how to prevent children from and young folks from becoming gangsters. Gentlemen, I want to tell you, crime is not syndicated all over the United States. Some parts it is, and other parts it isn't. There's individual crime by young people between the ages of 20 and 21 years old <clears throat> that could be stopped by taking those in the first offense and sending them some, to some proper school and teaching them right from wrong and not throwing them in with hardened criminals throughout the country. Another thing to think about prohibition, which I think is, brings me to think about this present discussion of, of Proposition 19 and the marijuana prohibition, is the inequities in enforcement. Warren Harding had plenty of whiskey in the basement of his White House. He had no lack of whiskey and, and you know, the, the clubs of the rich and powerful were packed with uh, casts of fine, the finest from uh, however they could procure it. And I think that's the, that is one of the things that uh, is why it's no longer sustainable when it's, when it's ended in the 1930s. The, the broad recognition that is the poorest people are taking this on the chin. With an eye on December 5th, work is being rushed in distilleries and bottling works. Thousands are being called back to work in plants of allied industries. At least 500,000 new jobs are predicted as a result of repeal. From keg and barrel factories, perhaps the most closely allied line, immediate benefits from repeal extend into almost every line of business and commerce. I think there are important parallels. I mean, to me, the most important parallel by far is the inequity of enforcement. Everyone knows that marijuana is smoked by populations that have nothing to do across all demographic groups in the United States. It's a very popular drug. Everyone also knows that your chances of getting in serious trouble for doing so, running afoul of the law, is much, much higher if you depending on what zip code you're in, in the color of your skin. Uh, this is an, an equitable system that's packing off a lot of poor children, poor young men of, of color into our uh, criminal justice system who shouldn't be there. Unless we can address that, these laws have to be lifted. And I think there's a broad consciousness that these things have been applied inequitably. Uh, and I think that's part of the reason why we have Prop 19 now. You know, I'm not actually sure that how much of an impact the transition will have. Uh, you know, when prohibition was over, it meant that bars that were closed were open. Uh, I'm not sure how big that was, you know. 
I, I don't really see legalization as having a very big impact on anything on on America at all. 